What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 14 of the Gyms Podcast. I am here with Ashley Trumpus of Sinon. Today, we're talking about how Sinon is tackling the challenges in the deaf community. It's just about getting up and doing it and like, you know, finding the time, finding the people and making it happen. You take control and you say, okay, this needs to be done and you do it. And you're never ready to start a business. You just <laughs> either, you either do it or you don't. Welcome to the Jibs Podcast, showcasing Detroit's movers and shakers, bringing you stories that reveal the gusto and grit that's long defined the city and its people. Together, we'll uncover the history and direction of the Motor City, one voice at a time. This is the Jibs Podcast with Jabron Ahmed. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 14 of the Jibs Podcast. I'm here with Ashley Trumpus, the founder of Sign On. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Ooh, uh, uh, can you tell us who you are, what Sign On is? Hi, I'm Ashley Trumpus. Am I talking to you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ashley Trumpus. I am a certified sign language interpreter and the CEO of Sign On. Mm -hmm. uh, what is Sign On? Sign On is a virtual immersion program for anyone that's interested in learning or practicing American Sign Language live, one on one with a deaf individual. So how how did Sign On start? Sign On started because when I was going to school to become an interpreter, mm -hmm. we had to get over two hundred and eighty hours of interaction with the deaf community, and the deaf community is pretty small. They're they're somewhat isolated, and so finding the time and the hours to get it was almost impossible for me. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to look online, I wanted to find something where it could be more one-on-one -on -one than the once a month coffee chats that they had because I just couldn't make it. And uh, looking online, there was nothing. There was nothing that was readily available anytime that I needed it. So I decided I was gonna make it, make it for myself. Yeah. And so then the idea grew from there and uh, we actually split it off into two parts, one for families and one for students. Because yeah. we found that families who recently found out that their child's deaf needed an outlet or a space where they could connect to the deaf community as well. So, How did, how did you personally get involved with uh, interpreting in sign language? I actually took a class in college just for fun and I just became like enthralled with the language and was like, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and so I took more classes. It came really easy to me. And uh, my teacher actually suggested that I become an interpreter because I didn't know that that was a real job. Like, you can be an interpreter and have it be worthwhile. And uh, so then I went to school for it. So, uh, what kind of, uh, I mean, you've been in this for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, what what kind of misconceptions do people have about the deaf community? I think one of the strangest ones is when you go to a restaurant with a deaf person and the hostess or the waitress um, brings you a braille menu. Yeah. <laughs> because they're, I don't know what they're thinking at the time, but a deaf person is not yeah, blind. Right. They don't need a braille menu. They can read the menu just fine. Yeah. But that might be strangest, funniest ones that yeah, happens. What, I mean, I, I guess like, you know, uh, I've had interactions with deaf people and I don't mm -hmm. do sign language. Right? right. And so usually what will happen is, uh, at least in the past, we've communicated through just like texting. Yeah. Or typing on paper. the phone, and paper, yeah. something like that. Um, uh, but I, but I'm pretty good at staying calm in situations and, and being able to adapt, but I know people that freak are out. in those situations and freak out. And I've heard, I've seen people like just maybe talk a little louder or something like that. Yeah, that's another yeah. one. Just because you're talking louder doesn't mean they're going to automatically hear you. So yeah, that happens a lot. Um, one thing that the deaf community feels really strongly about is not being called hearing impaired. Mm. They're deaf. So use the word deaf. It's not a bad word. Mm -hmm. That's the word that you should always use. Um, how big is your team? We have about 27. Okay. 
And how does, uh, how does somebody get involved with Sion? Like, how do they become an interpreter? So our workers aren't interpreters. All of our workers are deaf. Okay. Um, so they would become an ambassador. So uh, they log on to our website, um, click the careers page, mm -hmm. send us their resume, and then we go from there and start the interview process. Okay, cool. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to learn... If you wanted to learn, yeah. Then how would I, how would I do that? Same thing, log into our website at www.signonconnect.com yeah. and uh, you can choose from different packages of one session, two sessions, or five sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you purchase your session, you're logged into your account. Um, we're available from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. So whenever you are available, you can click on and connect to a deaf person. Yeah. Uh, so, a, a part of this podcast is, uh, you know, offering tangible advice for people that want to start their own uh, their startup or small business, uh, but really have no idea where to start, right? So, you know that you wanted to start sign on yeah. this company, and they might not have started a sign on, I don't know. Uh, but, like, how did you go from this idea to creating an actual company? Really, you just have to jump in head first. You can't be timid about, oh, am I going to start it? Am I not going to start it? You really just go for it. Um, if you believe in yourself, go for it. Make sure you've got a great support team, um, people that will stand behind you and believe in your idea as well. And uh, get yourself a good lawyer um, so that you can either, you can figure out what, what type of business you're going to be. If you're going to be an LLC, a nonprofit, an S Corp, C Corp, one of those, that would be... That's where I started, is figuring out which business I wanted to be. Yeah, and uh, your business is... An LLC. An LLC, and it's located in Detroit. Yep. Uh, so what kind of obstacles um, have you faced growing a company in Detroit? Um, I, guess in general, I guess just in general would be... There was no problems finding workers. That was probably the easiest thing. I mean, we get resumes every day. Mm -hmm. um, the next would be finding clients and just going out and getting the schools that we need. Um, and then for me, it's, it's marketing, social media and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I have a big problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Detroit itself is great because there's so many people that you can go and just ask like if you offer someone a coffee, they'll go and grab coffee with you and give their advice. I found that to be the most helpful, is mm -hmm. find someone that you think is knowledgeable in their little area, take them out to coffee and just pick their brain. Yeah, yeah, I've heard, uh, so I've heard two things. I've heard one about Detroit mm -hmm. is, oh, you know, everybody, like you said, is so, is so open to wanting to help each other yes. out because the community is pretty small. Yeah. And uh, you can take people out to coffee, whatever. But then, like, I've heard this other argument. This other argument is, uh, you know, like the gatekeepers of the city, the, the, like, the head honchos, like, don't really want to help other people out and because they feel like, you know, they've created something and they don't want anybody impeding on that. I haven't really experienced that too much, um, mm -hmm. but maybe I'm not talking to the head honchos, so <laughs> right. you're not finding that. But um, if you go to the, the Fireside Coffee or the Fireside Chats that they have on Eventbrite and things like that, um, the speakers tend to be quite open about talking to you. They might not get a coffee with you, but you can find people in the audience that will. So right. I think start small. Or start with the people that are willing, and then you can move yourself up. Mm -hmm. uh, what what resources in Detroit primarily have you used to help grow your business? Startup Week, that's a good one to go to. Um, demo Day's coming up. Um, yeah, and then just meeting people and being willing to ask them, hey, do you mind grabbing a cup of coffee with me? Yeah. I admire what you're doing. Let's go. Um, actually, recently on LinkedIn, some people have contacted me just to have a co cup of coffee with. And so mm -hmm. I would say be open to everything. Um, meet with anybody that wants to meet with you. Mm -hmm. And hopefully someone will return the favor, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So just be open to talking to different people. Mm -hmm. So I... Uh, a big, I guess a big part of growing a company is being able to present what you do mm -hmm. and pitch what you do. 
And honestly, like, I feel like I don't know anybody else that pitches more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, how, uh, I mean, when you first started, were you really nervous? Were you oh, good yeah. at public speaking? Or nope. How did, so how did, how did you develop that skill? You force yourself to do it. Yeah. Um, you really don't give yourself a choice. You just show up and go. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned to memorize my script. So create a good one minute pitch, create a good three minute pitch, create a good five minute pitch, and then have your 20 minute pitch. Mm -hmm. um, don't use note cards. I learned that is where you kind of like turn yourself in and they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, don't have anything in your hand and just have it memorized. Seems to be the best advice for me. Just go out there and pretend that nobody's there. Yeah. And sometimes people don't know what to do with their hands. You know, uh, I've had a tendency to like really become really animated and yeah. just move around too much. Uh, and then I guess vice versa, some, some people just like stand still. So I always choose to sit. Okay. And I sit right on the edge of the chair and you keep your hands on your lap and don't bounce your legs. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Uh, what kind of advice off the top of your head would you have for uh, an aspiring entrepreneur? Dive into it. Yeah. Dive in head first. Yeah. Do it. If you really believe in your idea, do the research behind it, and then dive in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what is Sinai working on currently that you're really excited about, and what can we expect from you in one year, two year, three years? So right now, we're rolling out our new app, so it will be available on smartphones and tablets, so you can have your sessions online, and I mean on your phone or tablet. Yeah. And uh, so that's our biggest thing that we're really excited about. In one year, we're planning on um, being in more schools nationwide. Right now, we're in 17 states, so we're hoping yeah. to be in more than 17. And then our five-year plan is um, possibly adding other sign languages. Mm -hmm. So not every country has uses American Sign Language. Um, all of them are different. Every culture has a different sign language. Mm -hmm. Um, so we might add Italian sign language and Spanish sign language because we've been getting quite a few questions about that. Yeah. Have you ever, uh, I guess so while we're at it, uh, have you ever gotten any pushback from anybody in the deaf community about what you're doing? Um, the only pushback would be having more um, of a deaf role in management, which we do. They, there's been maybe one or two in the deaf community that are like, well, a deaf person should have started this company. Right. And I understand where they're coming from, but with with uh, with this company, it's catering to the hearing because they're the ones that need to connect to the deaf community. So we need to understand that the client base is the hearing. Mm. Yeah. Um. A uh, question I like to ask everybody is what, I mean, you have a business in Detroit, mm -hmm. I mean, you're from Michigan, right? Yep. But you've, you've chosen to grow this business here, so what makes Detroit so special to you? I think just that everybody is so excited right now. Right now, it just feels like the right time to be in Detroit. Yeah. Um, there's enough resources, there's enough people, and just the excitement. Mm -hmm. There's an excitement here that you can really feel. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you for people watching or for people listening uh, if they want to connect with you where can they find you uh, we are online at www.signonconnect.com as well as on Facebook and Twitter cool awesome well thank you for being on the show thank you uh, thank you for watching and until next time stay tuned <laughs>